Welcome back to Mouse to House Campus folks, this is your camper nerd, Anthony Valentine. Today I'm going to be reviewing, with the help of my trusty friend, Dennis the Drone, this 2006 Auto Sleeper Rianza. I couldn't find Dennis yesterday, he'd gone into a sulk, wearing his camouflage outfit after his angry eyes in our last video, but nevertheless he's here. So yes, I think it's about time, over to you Dennis. Nice fly over there Dennis, so I'll take it over from here. So just to recap, this is the in-depth review part of this 2006 Auto Sleeper Rienza. She's a beauty. So it's on the Ford Transit chassis with the turbo diesel engine. This is the 135 brake horsepower model, six speed manual, converted from brand new by Auto Sleepers in Gloucester. As my regular subscribers will know, I'm a huge fan of Auto Sleepers brand. Some people can, can't get their head around the prices they are commanding on the open market second hand. But you have got to remember, they are a premium product that hold a value. This particular one has got lots of features, so we'll try and cover as many of those as I can remember or show you. So she's on 16 inch alloy wheels all round, power steering, of course, electric windows, remote central locking. There we go, six speed manual, CD player, wooden effect dashboard, plenty of cup holders. It's got a rear camera, so that operates, but this one is set and configured, so it's on all the time. So if you reverse, obviously it's very handy, but when driving you can use it, as a, it's effectively a second rear view mirror. So we've got one angle there, and that's a full seven inch color monitor. So that's quite helpful when driving. And the electric windows, remote central locking, electric mirrors. We'll have a quick look under the bonnet first. to the left and then slightly to the right I'm going to trick you out holding one hand on the video there we go so it's the Duratec TDCI Ford engine it's 135 brake horsepower So the driver's seat is 
fixed. What I mean by fixed, obviously it sides up and forward and the rear seat is a comfort, but the passenger seat on this here lever, you just move that and then that swivels around and creates more living space as it were. So just coming around the driver's side or off side, so we've got the standard fit Thetford cassette toilet. For the flush fluid, as always, pink for the stink and blue for the lid. Access to the 240 mains hookup, exhaust for the Truma heating system to heat the hot air, air the hot air, rather heat the water. The LPG storage. So we've got room there for two large gas bottles as well as an isolator switch there and you've got individual isolator switches inside safety is very much paramount on motor homes especially when gas bottles are involved the last owner's left there is your two fluids blue and pink We've got two taps here for the two underslung tanks, large carrying capacities. So one is for the grey water, the waste, and one is for the fresh water. We've got access point here, lockable for the fresh water. This particular one at some stage in its life has had a tow bar fitted. It doesn't look like it's been used actually. So we've got the seven pin electric socket there. Tow ball under the cover, quite a neat job with a reinforced tow bar and bull bar as it were. We've got the Fiorma four carry, carry bike rack. We'll just undo that latch there and there. And that folds down, so there you go. Nice feature to have. into place. I do know a lot of motorhome people that don't even have bikes but they do like that being there as an extra reinforcing bumper so if anyone backs up into them or they back up into the wall you're only going to be hitting that before you're touching your body as it were. You've got the ladders there that you can access so your first foot goes into the step that's inbuilt into the bumper and then easy access to the roof area, which is fully galvanized and reinforced. That's the rear view camera. This particular one was supplied by Spinny Motor Homes, large motor home dealership here in the United Kingdom. We've got an outside access point to more storage space. That's underneath the rear lounge area. A bit tricky to open with the camera, but just to show you, we've just got the jack there and we've got the awning handle. So it's got the industry standard Fiorma awning F45. So the crank handle there will bring that completely out. So that's very easy just to bring the awning out to here with two little easy legs in and out within 30 seconds so that keeps the shade off or you can go to the extra time and trouble to get a safari room which effectively brings an extra outside room so that just makes three surfaces there all enclosed maybe for pets or larger families or if you wanted that extra living space These are the vents for the fridge. Fuel filler cap. I think it's that time to step inside. I'm sure you'll be waiting to see what it looks inside. I can assure you it was worth listening to my voice for the last eight minutes, because she's beautiful. So it's got a Fiorma side, handle there 
just gives that extra easiness to climb aboard. So, so yes, a fully electrical retractable step, which is controlled on the control panel here. So we'll just open it up and step inside. We'll start walking over to the cab area. Just one thing I forgot to mention, it's got air conditioning. So auto sleeper bought this as a transit van in 2006 and decided to build the Rianza motorhome on the top of a top of the range transit chassis. All auto sleepers are converted from brand spanking new. This is the T350 model, the 135 brake horsepower. There you can see the passenger seat with the captain swivel giving that extra bit of living area inside the front cab. So above the cab is a large double bed spanning round. So on here we have the safety latches, two of those that can pop up there and then that will bring so no one's going to fall out of bed, small children, etc. Or pets. So we just put them back into the little latch. We've got the fold up ladders there. So latch it to here. And if your children are like mine, they'll be super excited to be climbing those ladders to sleep at night. And of course, we can just fold this forward up and to the forward. I'm demonstrating how easy it is there with one hand on the camera. And that just forward places into a latch there. A secondary latch on this passenger side. And then that creates large headroom and space there. So if there's only two of you traveling there's a lot more headroom, but you've still kept the storage area above the cab. So let's sit in the passenger seat and span out to the rear of this large motorhome. It's got the large U-shaped lounge, which is a very popular configuration. No prizes for guessing why it's called U-shape. But what that really means is that you can be parked up, you can reverse to any destination and wherever you're sat, you've got a good, lovely, large panoramic view out of all the windows. So of course you can have your feet up this way, that way, that way, you decide. And of course, these two beds come together, those two cushions fall down into the center or the edge rather these come to the center and then we've got an absolutely huge queen size double bed there's certainly room very comfortably for two adults or three adults if that's your way or you've obviously got the two above the cab so you would say it's a four berth but five berth at a push beautiful condition it's got over mats over the over mats over the original laminated floor. The last owner of this vehicle, by the way, was a Mouster House subscriber, thanks to John from Prastatin. A change of circumstances, he's now parted company with this, so this will be available for sale at camperneur.com. The only thing I had to do, really, after a a light wash down as always I have a fetish for these knobs and bezels or rosettes rather sometimes they can just have a few little marks or wear over time that's the only weak spot on an auto sleeper so I've changed all of these bezels and rosettes all the way around I actually ran out in my collection of the wine cabinet handles so if you can just notice there there's the old one which I've got a new one on order and there's the new one 
I couldn't possibly supply or live with a motorhome with that so I've decided to put new ones on so that's what it'll be having so yes the all-important wine cabinet so you've got room there for glasses actual holders for the wine bottles have been used at the moment for glasses above the wine cabinet is a, either a TV room or in this case it's used for a microwave so there's the microwave but there's the access to the TV aerial socket as well as the mains supply so anyone could put a a TV in the cabinet there or leave it as it is currently housing a microwave so we've got the full control panel so it's got the Truma Ultra Store for the hot water to be heated on gas so we just put it on here there's the thermostat I don't know whether it's just zoomed in on the green light but there's the green light that means the pilot lights lit you can also operate the heating system ultra heat on three versions of two kilowatts, half or one. So that's when you're on 240 mains hookup. And here's the heating system. It's the Truematic Ultra Heat blown air, as well as the gas. So all we do, we turn this knob. You might be able to hear it sparking. Then we hold it down here. It's just stopped sparking, so that means the pilot light's lit very tricky to get at the exact angle to see the pilot light there hold that in for three or four seconds let go and you should be able to hear a woof and basically that's lit on there that's just respark there because it's not been lit for a while but now that's fully lit if you don't hear a sparking from here the common fault is the batteries run out for the igniter module and that's just hidden bit tricky to get underneath but it's just under here on the left hand side and that takes one double-a battery so I can hear that's on full pelt now on full heat so you've got the automatic and manual mode and that will blow the air through the central heating so you can just hear it getting in there as well as the thermostat there and what that will do that will blow hot air through the central heating system which we've got one place there for it to come through as well as in the shower area and wet room so just under just under there we go just under the toilet holder so while we're in here we'll have a quick look around hot and cold to the sink shower facility just put that shower on there you can see plenty of room and storage above the Fatford Swivel cassette toilet, the electric flush, more cupboard space underneath, as well as a shower tray. Vanity mirror and soap dispenser. So coming back round towards the kitchen area, we've got the Dometic three-way fridge. So three-way, I've already got it ignited now, that's on gas. If you're on the mains hookup, you can convert it there to 240 volts or 230. It says 230, but it will stand, the UK standard is 240 volts, which is near enough the same, as well as the 12 volt when you're driving. And you've got the thermostat here. We can lock it so it's nice and solid for travelling. Unlock it. And then you've got the large area and cooler and freezer department. So 
coming up to the kitchen sink. We'll just swivel the tap round. Hot and cold. A drainer. Spotless. We've got the full size cooker. So this one has got one 240 mains cooker point as well as the three gas burner hobs. So we just put that into the full position like the igniter and as always looking for that blue flame. Full size oven. Again, spotless. And grill. Don't know whether we can get the camera angle for the grill, but I'll try. Oh, just about, just about. Just about see the blue flame there. The last owner, John from Prestatton, has clearly looked after it. In fact, he only disposed of this due to a, a change in circumstances. But hopefully, you'll be glad to see it go into a new home soon. So we've got the matching interior on the front seats with the armrests. All the mats are removable, wipeable and washable as usual. Lovely quality of upholstery from Auto Sleeper. That are actually done at Premier Furnishings in Derby. So we've got another vanity mirror that's opposite the kitchen area. Stepping to the side, we have the wardrobe. We have access to the mains fuse supply as well as the inhibitor gas valves so if you didn't want to go outside on a windy rainy night to switch the gas off for peace of mind you can individually close the gas off as follows we've got the 12 volt booster pack for the TV aerial and that's fully adjustable from the inside someone's actually put extra lights inside so we've got the full size three standing table there. Click clunk into place. So that's not going to rattle on your travels, but at least it's nice and secure and stowed away. So of course you could use it there, which it'll be used mostly for dining in the rear lounge area. But with it being freestanding, of course, on that lovely sunny day, you can take it outside and dine al fresco. We've got a full set of safety and instructions on the rear of the motorhome. Nothing's left by chance by Auto Sleeper. So we've got plenty of lights. Individual reading lights in the lounge. Fully adjustable. We've got the large roof light, which has got the all important fly net if you want to have the roof up as it were for fresh air, but you didn't want to let the flies and midges in. And of course, you've got the complete blackout. Which is foil covered. Same with these concertina, these are the later concertina type blinds to all windows. So what that means is you can see now they're just coming out. Basically the curtains are really there for cosmetic reasons. They do look very nice and classy but because you've got these blinds you've got total blackout. Above 
you've got the important fly nets as well. So we just clip that there, that pops up there. Just one note I can advise you, just take these nice and slowly and they will always go into place. It's a shame I've seen so many people on my travels who ram these up and ram them down and wonder why they end up with a few little kinks or it's not going back into place. So just nice and slowly and evenly and they will all go back into place. We've got one rear seat belt. So we'll just touch base again on the seatbelt law as it stands at the publication of this video. So pre-October 2007, it is fully legal to travel in the rear of a motorhome with no seatbelt if there is no seatbelts fitted. So in this case, the last owner, John, has had a seatbelt fitted for a grandchild. So if there is a person sitting in the back of this camper when travelling and there is a seatbelt fitted, which the this is the case in this, you have got to sit there in the seatbelt. If there was two passengers sat at the back, one has got to be in the seatbelt and there is no law to say the second passenger in the rear area has got to have a seatbelt. After October 2007, then it's compulsory for people travelling in the back of a motorhome to wear a seatbelt. If they aren't fitted, they have got to be fitted by law. I hope that clarifies it for the moment. On the leisure door, as it were, you've got the magnetic cover here. Uh, so this just magnetises the fly net so you can open, swing the habitation door completely open. You've got the fresh air, but of course you've got the fly nets. You've also got an individual blind that pops back and down here. You've even got an extra kitchen workspace. as well as a little rubbish bin. So we just clip that up in there, that gives that extra space. And auto sleepers being what auto sleepers do best over engineer things. And they've even got an extra worktop that slides out from there. So that gives a fantastic worktop surface area for the kitchen area. So we just slide that back in above the kitchen. And then this, we just move that goes into there, and that holds that up solid, so all we do is lift it down and that, and then that goes onto that little clip there, and that shouldn't rattle when we're driving. Again, total blackout blinds to every window. Nice storage area, and some cups left by the last owner, above the kitchen area. We've even got the toaster and kettle left. So that's me just about finished now. I think I've shown you most of the bits and bobs. So we've got an override light switch here for the lighting area and the reading lights, as well as an outside light. And just one little uh, note, a lot of people don't know what this button is. Well, that's the radio override button. So we can go into the front of the cab, switch the radio on. Now the Ford 6000 is set that if that is left on and not touched for one hour, it will automatically switch off. But auto sleepers don't like to leave things to chance. So you've now got the facility of listening to the radio at the front and not worrying about flattening the battery on the engine. So we can just individually turn the radio off on that switch, or if you change your mind and you want it back on again, that will pop back on as follows. And then it's got the speakers, the rear part of the lounge, as well as the front. So we just switch that off. So yes, it's been a pleasure showing you around this 2006 Auto Sleeper. Rienza. I'll just go for a little drive now. Hopefully Dennis will follow me. And I'll catch you in a short while. Over to Dennis.
So thanks again for watching this review of this 2006 Auto Sleep at Rianza that me and Dennis have created and made for your pleasure. Feel free to contact me on 0798 526 1078 or your comments are welcome down below. You've also got the option of subscribing. That will let you know of any new exciting videos and reviews by myself. For now, I'll catch you on the next video.